Let us pray. Our Father, we bless your name. Tonight, we just want to come and say thank you for the great things you have done for us and for the things you are doing now and for the things you will continue to do. We pray, O oh Lord, you'll make us grateful children, thankful children, so that every moment of our lives we'll always find time to come back to you to say thank you. And tonight, as we want to praise your name from the depth of our hearts, Lord, we're praying according to your word, you will inhabit the praises of your children. And as we praise you, we pray that our Jericho walls will fall in Jesus' name. We pray that prison doors will open in Jesus' name. And you'll be so mightily present that your glory will fill this place, fill our hearts, fill the church. And Lord, we pray that anything which is not of you will be rooted out of our lives as we give the glory to you in Jesus' name. I pray that tonight, in every heart, in every life, in every family, like Lazarus, Martha, and Mary saw your glory in the mighty thing that you did. We pray that you reveal your glory to everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Very briefly, I want to bring the word of God to you on the power of praise. In Psalm 107, verses 31 and 32, all that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Here you will find the psalmist expressing a heart desire, saying, Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Many times we come before the Lord and we bring our requests, we bring a petition, we bring our prayers. We're always demanding, we want this, we want that, and that's all right. There are times we need to make those demands. Because the Lord himself has invited us. Ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And yet, there are times that we come with no request. We come with no petition. And we are really not asking anything from the Lord. We just come to praise, magnify, exalt the name of the Lord. And that's why the psalmist said, Oh, that man everywhere, in every generation, would praise the Lord. Why? For his goodness, for his grace, for his mercy, for answered prayer, for preservation of life, for our health, for the good things in life, for the things that's given us to enjoy, for his manifold blessings, for his goodness. Because there is no man alive today. If he were really looking words and look around, he will be able to see the goodness of the Lord in his life. Even the saved and the unsaved. For the unsaved, that the Lord has been so merciful to still preserve their lives. Not willing that anybody shall perish, but that all shall come to repentance. And for the saved, that all your sins have been forgiven. And that he has brought the riches of glory, the riches of the kingdom of God unto you. You'll find something for which to praise the Lord. And then it says, for his wonderful works to the children of men. And if you ask the psalmist, he'll have a lot to tell you about his wonderful works to himself, to his family, and to the nation of Israel. And then it says, let them, the children of men, let them exalt 
him also in the congregation of the people which means our praises should not stop in our own private inner chambers in our houses but even in the congregation of the people of god let's exalt him and praise him in the assembly of the elders that means the praise of the lord is not just an affair for the children an affair for the youth an affair for teenagers even amidst the elders we are to praise the lord i promised you that the message will be very short and yet i'm still going to give you my three points number one fighting with the weapons of praise you know you, you fight battles in this life and there are times you pray and the walls are not down yet and there are times you fast and the solution has not come yet and there are times you do everything you think you knew how to do you quote all the promises you hold on to the covenant and you say lord you promise you will fulfill your word you will never fail and it appears that the problems are still there because that battle in particular you have to fight that battle with the weapon of praise and then number two freedom in the wonders of praise and there are times you just feel that you are hedged around and as you are hedged around and it appears you want to go to the right no way you want to go to the left and no way moving forward there's no possibility and you don't want to go backwards and as you are just talk there and you do everything you felt you could do and yet it appears you are not free and then you begin to praise the lord and then begin to see the wonders of praise and then there is that freedom that comes to you in the wonders of praise and then uh, there is the fruit of worship and praise you know there are times to just come before the lord and you just say uh, open up yourself and you are just praising the lord and you say lord i just came to worship you and i just came to praise your name and then you begin to see some fruits that will be coming up as a result of that worship and praise let's go to number one very quickly it's fighting the weapons of praise you all know the story the children of israel had been having it in their mind for years and they were thinking that they were accepting the promise of the lord he was going to take them to the land of canaan and the older generation had dry had died and you know why the older generation died it was because of murmuring and complaining the older generation if you look at the people in the old testament especially in exodus and leviticus and numbers and deuteronomy you'll find a peculiar problem with them they didn't know how to say thank you they didn't know how to say praise the lord they didn't know how to sing a song unto the lord you will find that when they came out of the land of egypt and now they were by the red sea and when they saw the red sea in front and the mountains on either side they saw the egyptians behind them murmuring complaining grumbling you brought us out so we can perish here and eventually the lord said because there was still like immature people Moses, why are you crying unto me? Stretch forth your rod. You know the story. And the Red Sea was parted in two. And then they began to praise the Lord and to sing. But at the end of that chapter, and when you go to the next chapter to you, you'll find they went back to their murmuring again. Oh yes, they opened the Red Sea. Oh yes, we know that all that is all right. Now what, which water are we going to drink? When is he going to provide for us? You see, they really didn't praise the Lord. They died in the wilderness with complaints and murmuring in their mouth. And now, they had gone through the wilderness and they were told, now you are going to the land of Canaan. And they went through River Jordan. And as they got through to uh, the borders of Canaan, the very first time they will be able to capture and get, the gates were locked and the walls were high. And it appears that Jericho was standing between them and the promise of the Lord. How were they going to do it? And then God said, this generation that will inherit the land of promise will be different from the elders that died in the wilderness. This generation that will get into the accomplishment and the fulfillment of the promises of the Lord will not be a grumbling generation a murmuring generation will be a worshiping praising generation that will be exalting the lord and so he said i'm going to show you 
how to fight in your battles. I'm going to show you how to win the victory. And he gave Joshua the instruction. Joshua now, chapter 6. In Joshua chapter 6, reading from verse 1. Now, Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. And none went out, none came in, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hands Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty man of Valor. And how many promises have the Lord given you? And he says, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. See, I fulfilled the promise already. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to really get into the land of promise? Because although the Lord said, I've given it into your hands, the walls are still there. The mighty men of valor are still there. And it appears there's nothing you can do to be able to move in. You cannot climb the wall. You cannot go through the gate. You move around, there's nothing you can do. And you're looking at the promise like this. And there is a wall between you and the promise of the Lord. What are you going to do? And so the Lord told them what they were going to do in verse 16. It says in verse 16, and it came to pass that at the seventh time, when the priest blew with the trumpet, and Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Verse 20, so the people shouted. When the priest blew with the trumpet, and it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city and their feet were able to touch the threshold of the promised land every man straight before him and they took the city you will take the promise tonight uh, these young people are going to blow the sound of the trumpet and they're going to play some string instruments too and they're going to sing with their voices and uh, if you are really happy when you hear that uh, you know sound of the trumpet and uh, they finish a particular a particular part if it really gets to you and you don't want to leave them alone saying well you are children we are elders we are older people keep on praising the lord uh, my family problem i'm still thinking about if you are really going to praise the lord with them although you cannot sing like they're singing even if you could sing very well it will disturb what they're singing when they finish a particular song you'll put your hands together and praise the name of the lord and i'm telling you jericho walls will fall down i'm going to read a story that you know very well unto you but it's very necessary because we fight the battles of life with the weapons of praise in second chronicles and in chapter 20 second chronicles chapter 20 verses 1 uh, to 4 it came to pass after this also that the children of moab and the children of Ammon, and with them beside other, the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And they, then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, and uh, from beyond the sea from this side, Syria. And behold, they be in Azazontama, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, he was afraid, and he set himself to seek the Lord and he proclaimed the fast throughout all Judah and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord but the praying didn't solve the problem the fasting didn't solve the problem the petition didn't solve the problem that the multitude came together and they prayed didn't solve the problem but then they had the promise of the Lord. And they were told, this battle is not yours. It's the Lord's battle. Can I tell you tonight, whatever battle you think you see in your life, the battle is not yours. Like Jesus told his disciples, when they said Lazarus is sick, he said, this sickness is not unto death. It's for the glory of God. This problem you have is not for defeat. It's for the glory of God. And if you will just praise the Lord, you will find that the enemies will finish one another, fight one another, and you'll just be seen that you, you're on victory ground in Jesus' name. Hey, look at verse 21 now. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Singers, not unto men, unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of holiness 
as they went out before the army and to say praise the lord for his mercy endureth forever praise the lord for his mercy endureth forever can you say that praise the lord how for his mercy forever that mercy will touch you tonight if you can just praise the lord you'll find that the mercy of god is still there it endures forever and when they began to sing and to praise the lord as the young people our own children as they begin to praise the lord tonight and sing unto the lord the lord will set ambushment against your enemies against moab against mount Seir, and wheat and wacom against you and all those that were come against judah and they were smitten the enemy will be smitten let's go to point two very quickly is freedom freedom in the wonders of praise freedom in the wonders of praise do you remember that saul had a problem and saul was not an ordinary fellow he was a king he had an evil spirit tormenting torturing him and then they said can we look for a young fellow that will come and play an instrument and as that inspired music is rendered we believe you are going to be well i will not bother to read it to you because you know the story and then they brought david at that time a teenager and the majority of these uh, young people tonight the majority of them are teenagers and then they will come to play the violin and play the trumpet and all the various uh, musical instruments and then they'll be singing with their voices if there is any oppression in your life as it was in the life of Saul, that oppression is going to be taken away can I even tell you if you can represent somebody? If you have somebody at home and that fellow is being oppressed by the devil by proxy, standing in for that individual as you are receiving and you are giving the praise while the children are singing, while they are offering praise to the Lord, and in your heart you are saying, Praise the Lord. This is wonderful that God could give voices to little children that could they could sing like this, give them skill, they could play like this. Oh Lord, I magnify your name with them, I glorify you with them. As you are doing that, your relatives at home, the people that have problems in your church, their problems will be melting away in Jesus' name. Freedom in the wonders of praise. You remember Paul and Silas now, they had been beaten. And their feet were in the stalks. And it was a dark dungeon. They were held there in the prison. And it appears that this unfortunate situation, there was nothing that could change it. And then Paul, Isaac, and Silas, in the midnight, there are times to come to the midnight in your life. When it appears there is no light, when it appears the rays of the sun are totally far away and it will take another turn of the day before the light will come again and it appears that the prison doors are shut and it appears the guards are there watching over saying you will never come out of this thing and you pray and you quote the promises and nothing happens but in acts chapter 16 verse 25 and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them the prisoners were singing to God here tonight even villagers were here and everyone in this compound were here and the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking if there is any imprisonment if there is any bondage to the very root of the problem to the very foundation of the problem everything will be shaking tonight in jesus name every plant every tree that the father has not planted in your life has not planted in your family as we are praising the lord tonight everything will be rooted up in jesus name suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened no exception all the doors were open it's my belief tonight that there will be no exception to this rule all of us who are here the lord is going to touch you any closed door in ministry the lord is going to open that door all the doors were opened 
And then we're told everyone's bands were loosed. There's freedom tonight. There's freedom tonight. Now, I go to number three. The fruit of worship and praise. The fruit of worship and praise. Have you read the story of that leper? It's in Matthew chapter 8. And we're told from verse 1, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me whole. Hey, don't worry about the pattern of prayer here. Don't worry about the theology of prayer here. What we are talking about is even when you do not understand that God is willing to heal, even when your theology of healing is not exactly right and perfect, even when there is a doubt about the willingness of God to heal and to deliver, even when in your prayer you put an if that shouldn't have been there if you will worship the Lord. God will overlook your theology of healing. God will overlook the if you put in your prayer. God will overlook the shortcoming or the wrong grammar in your prayer. If you will worship the Lord, then the Lord will heal you. He will deliver you. That's the fruit of worship and praise. He worshiped the Lord. And then he muttered out. He said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. You will hear those words tonight. In your, in your life, the will of God will be done. Forget your sorrows now. Forget your problems now. Don't murmur like the elders in the wilderness. And don't complain. Tonight is a night of worship and praise. He said, be thou clean. And immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. You followed through from the walls of Jericho to the time of Jehoshaphat and to the time of Paul and Silas. And you come to this uh, ignorant uh, leper. Even though they had various levels of knowledge, there was something common between them. The praise of the Lord. The worship of the Lord. And every time you have this praise and worship, something wonderful always happened. And tonight, as we are having the praise and worship, something wonderful is going to happen. Before the youth choir will come to present the concert, would you worship the Lord yourself? Will you praise the Lord yourself? Don't even ask for anything. I'll just praise the Lord, worship the Lord, exalt the Lord, honor his name. Why don't you stand up? You may want to even raise your hands to the Lord. You may want to surrender to the Lord. Lord, I don't come to grumble tonight. I have not come to murmur tonight. I have not come to complain tonight. I have not come to accuse you of anything tonight. I have not come to say you've not done this tonight. I have not come to be jealous or envy or envious of anybody tonight. I have not come to do anything or ask for anything tonight. I just want to praise the Lord. I just want to praise the Lord. I just come to praise the Lord. And as you praise the Lord, you'll find that great things, great things will happen in your life, will happen in your ministry, will happen in your family. And closed doors will be opened in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. If you will praise the Lord, the Jericho walls in your life will fall down flat. The impossibilities will become possible. The difficulties will melt away. All those long-standing problems, you will find that they will vanish away only by just praising the name of the Lord. And you can fight your battles by the weapons of praise. You can come into the freedom by the wonders of praise. And you can have the fruit of worship and praise in your life.
Praise Him. Praise Him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Father, we bless your name tonight. We glorify you. Tonight, we just come to worship. We just come to praise your name. You've done so many things. You've enriched our lives. You provided so much for us. You've touched our lives. You have transformed and transfigured us. Great are the things you've done in our lives. And tonight we all just come before you as a whole congregation. And we came to say thank you. Lord, we pray that tonight, as our own children, our young people, will assist us and will go before us and use their skill to praise your name. We pray that on our behalf. They're doing it on our behalf and doing it for themselves. We pray that we'll accept our praises in Jesus' name. And that like at the time of the dedication of the temple of Solomon. When they began to play, when they began to sing, when they began to glorify you, that you filled the temple with your glory. We're praying that tonight, as these young people will use these musical instruments and their voices to praise your name, we pray that your glory will fill this place in Jesus' name. And the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the healings and the deliverances that normally come with your glory will come to every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Be glorified tonight. Be exalted tonight. Amen. And let it be a moment, a time of joy, praises before you. Help us, Lord, at this time to just forget ourselves and be lost in the wonders of praise and worship. So that you'll be able to move mightily in our lives. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 